All right, we have um this is a review for Lost Five Times episode. It's the eighth episode of this um second season. It's titled um Into the Deep. So pretty much in this episode, we got um we're gonna start off in Fairytale Land. Captain Hook had just completed his climb down the beach off. He's greeted by Cora, who asks for the compass. Hook tells pretty much tells her he don't got it. Emma trapped him, you know, trapped locked him up there, and she got it. Cora's like she don't got time for these games, and leaves him alone. Leaves him alone with no way to store book and his taste for gen- vengeance is left unclenched because she knows it's gonna be like the worst punishment ever so instead of just sitting there killing him. Cora then goes, um, repeats that the survivors can't. She removes a heart from a drawer, drawer in the cabinet, and then blows on it with her magic and causes all the other drawers to glow. And all of a sudden, we see these people that she's pretty much ripped the hearts out. Their bodies using, um, their bodies and their so she can create zombies to go after Emma, um, Mary Margaret, Aura, and Milan. So, um, back over with those, speaking of those words, we got Emma showing a picture of Henry to Aurora, and she asked him, is this the boy she was? She's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So Emma's like, wait, how could they be sharing the same dream? But Mary Margaret speaks that she may know why this is happening, and she tells the um, other three women that she experienced the same world of flame and smoke as Aurora, and um, Henry had after being released from the sleeping curse. Aurora was angry that Mary Margaret did not inform her of this. Mary Margaret was like, she didn't want to worry her, so there was really no need to be worried. So the group then decides Aurora to go back to sleep and contact Henry. So in her fiery nightmare, Aurora, she talks to him and she tells him that her name is Aurora and that he is with um, his mother and the grandmother and that they need to sell. Back in the storybook, Henry ends up waking up, telling David and Regina that what he saw and they are excited until Regina, until Henry tells Regina that they need help from stopping her mother, Cora. So then you see Regina's face, she's like, oh no. So then, wow, we go over the nice little bell and the bell. They're trying to eat, you know, they're trying to join their little selves, add the little... Here comes Aurora. I'm like, ah, oh. I'm like, finally, when Mr. Gold has some chance to spend some alone time with Belle, and they're trying to communicate, get their love thing off, here we got trouble. I'm like, dang, Mr. Gold can't get a break. Like, for real? Oh, come on. Run away. We need to tell Mr. Gold that Cora's trying to find a storybook. Belle, then, who asks Cora is, Mr. Gold um, says, you'll never have to meet her. Because, look, look, because literally, Belle is, because if Cora comes here, Belle would be his weakness. That's his true love. That's be a weakness. You touch Bell, that's it. Mr. Gold comes for you. Slash comes for you. He's he's not gonna play that. You don't touch Bell. Bell is off the limits. Yeah. All right. What was that? Cause I was, my mom was asking that question. Sorry. In case y'all had to hit the screen. But um. Anyway. Um. Where was that? Oh yeah. Um. Back to um. Present day. Fairytale land. We got uh. We got um. Mulan noticing that Aurora has burned her on, on her arm, and Aurora states that she rubbed against some poison ivy. Mulan like, I don't believe you, really, 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 really. That's that's your excuse, poison ivy, really. That's what you're gonna tell me. Okay. Aurora then tells Mulan that it's her turn to help someone, and that she is doing this with a Mulan's approval because you know Mulan made a promise to Bella that I'm gonna protect her from beauty and blah blah blah. blah. So then we got um, storybook. Regina's bringing Henry one of his blankets as he prepares to fall asleep. David asks if Henry feels comfortable doing this. Henry says yes and that he wants to be a hero. Mr. Gold tells Henry a bedtime story and he tells him that Snow White and Prince Charming used a rare ink harvested from a squid to stun him and that more ink is located in his cell. So but then we have Aurora going back to sleep and she sees Henry again and she's you know, trying to communicate with him and stuff and tell him about, you know, t- tell Henry trying to tell her about the jar and rubber of the cell and stuff like that. So before Aurora can respond to him, a Mulan awakes her, causing her to be sucked up into a void and back into consciousness. So the group is going to be attacked by the zombies that were summoned by Cora. So, you know, it's kind of like, you got to, Aurora, you need to wake up now. Ain't no time to sleep. Wake up, wake up. So Mulan and them run off together, but then they are attacked by a group of zombies. One pins Mulan to the ground while the other drag Aurora Ray kicking the crown. Henry then wakes up and Mr. Go asks if he told him about the squid and he tells him that she got sucked out of dream. Regina and David are now frightened when they notice that that Henry has a burn on his arm because obviously it's a little, it's phys- the dream is literally affecting them. So we have Aurora now in prison beneath the beneath the former Haven. Cora comes in carrying a stray stew. She tells Aurora the that she would not be eating, and you know, and Cora's like, "You're more useful to me alive than dead." And, and she intends to trade Aurora for the magic compass. Aurora states that this is a bad idea. And since she is a stranger to Mary Margaret and Emma, that and the two of them want to go home, they would not, you know, do anything to sacrifice their fair chances of returning to 
you know, that's um, Henry Corvite. Um, you must not know Snow and her daughter with her. They're good guys. They're going to come and save you regardless if it puts their chance, their chance of going home in jeopardy, which is true. They're going to do that. It's just how good guys are, if I recall, the good guys. And he tell, then she tells Aurora that the rape that sucked Philip's soul well, that his soul was not actually Zora. It was just sent to another world. I'm like, oh, it was sent to another world. Okay, it's a soul, right? So, I'm, so I'm like, okay, where did it get sent to? Because you know, if you remember, the Mad Hatter's hat showed us all those rap, rap, you know, various doors that lead off to different worlds that we have yet to, you know, get into the storyline yet. So we're gonna really get this. So I'm thinking, like, oh snap, maybe his soul is in one of those worlds, and maybe he became like a character or something. Like, oh snap, Philip was actually such and such. But it's gonna be good though. Anyway, let me finish. Um, um, Aurora, um, then it's like, she may be able to, um, Aurora pretty much don't believe her and flings a troop food to her and Aurora like, plucky girl and pretty much knock the girl up happy. So as the group, you know, Mary, Margaret, and them, stand back, um, you know, he, they usually wait to the forge, a raven swoops in on Mary and Margaret's shoulder. He communicates to her, tells her that if the magic compass are not pretty much given the core by sundown, Aurora is pretty much a goner. Mulan's like, give me the freaking compass. Amber's like, no. You're not going to take the compass. Mulan's like, I'm going to give it the first control. And, and pretty much Emma and, and Snow was like, you think really that Cora's really going to let Aurora go just because you gave her a compass? No, she's not. She's evil. Duh. Come on. Anyway, back in story, but we got Mr. Go healing, you know, Henry's burn, and David and Regina don't want to risk Henry's life anymore by sending better because obviously it's dangerous. So David then asks if he could be put under a sleeping curse to contact Snow. Mr. Gold says that if you do that, you might never wake up. But David says that when he and Snow kiss, he will wake up. It'll be fine. You know, true love kiss breaks everything. Bam. Pretty much. Simple thing. No. Aurora then wakes up, finds herself face to face with Captain Cook. Stand over her. She is merely on guard, but Cook informs her that she is, that he is helping her to escape Coral's plan. Mm-hmm. Aurora doesn't believe him, but then he eventually gets out of the... And um, while Emma and Mary Margaret, you know, falling one out to the forest, Emma asks how bad the never world Mary Margaret is on us and tells us it's dark and lonely. Well, all you can think about is how you'll never see any of your loved ones again. Emma begins feeling guilty for causing Henry to fall into sleeping curse, but then Mary Margaret assures her that everyone feels guilty and they must journey on if they want to get back. Meanwhile, back in Storybook, we got um, David talk, and David was talking about sleeping curse. We got Regina mixing it up. Regina walks in and asks her if she's been using magic, and Regina tells him that she's been trying to be good. And Henry's like very proud about this. And he's, you know, watching her make the liquid and stuff. And he's like, he really should be the one to contact or, but, you know, David and uh, Regina is like, we agree on this kind of thing. We're not going to put you in harm's way. That's not going to happen. So we got Mulan and Snow. Um, Mulan about to make um, a snow pot of snow so she will go to sleep and go inside. Mr. Gold said that the first and easiest way to deliver a sleeping curse was through blood, which is why it was first used through a needle, which is a reference. And he puts in a spinner, which is which pretty much a reference to the whole Sleeping Beauty thing. You know, the needle, spinner, thread. Ah, sleep. Anyway, so here we then, um, um, so David then put, um, before David pricks his finger on the spinning needle, they, Henry gives him the necklace that would help protect David. So back in Fairytale Land, we got um, Mulan making a poppy seed stuff. Um, to the poppy dust, metal, um, Mary Murray, you know, gets ready for her sleep. And I hit her with a wow, bag of dust. She goes to sleep. David goes to sleep. So, there's David, Mulan, since Snow has already been under the because she's easy going to be all the way actually automatically be in that room. David has to find it. So, he eventually, um, he goes to sleep in this dark room with nothing in the mirror. And so, he finds a piece of guy to torch. And he noticed that, um, Henry's, um, necklace begins to, um, glow. And the heat caused him to drop the necklace while bending down a tree. But he noticed the heat is coming from the floor. And he realized the spoon is beneath him. So he has to break the floor, fall into the room. He sees Mary Margaret, tell her what they got to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, Mary Margaret realizes she starts to start to, start to dematerialize and realizes she's waking up and she starts crying. And here they go again with her famous quote, I will find you, I will find you, I will find you, I will always find you, I will always find you. Seriously, that should be a freaking ringtone. I will always find you. Your phone should just ring. I will always find you. You found me. Anyway. Back in storybook, Henry's scared because David's not waking up. We need Mary Margaret. So anyway, we got um <clears throat> back in Mary Margaret. Mary Margaret um wakes up and tries to find some find some try to find some leftover poppy dust, saying that David's all alone. Junior, she got a bet. Emma comforts her mama, saying they will you know they will be there to save her. 
and stuff. So then um, they realize that Mulan has taken the compass and ran away. So they go after her. Uh, Mary Martha nearly hits Mulan with arrow like you. Mm, you know, as, as a PG thirteen, so we can't curse. But you know what she wants to say. Um. And pretty much Mary Market is about to, you know, Mary Market, she ain't the typical Snow White in this verse. She a scrapper. So she fight Mulan and stuff for comfort, but she almost kills her and Aurora comes in and saves the day, you know. But then she escaped her jail cell by way of Hook. Meanwhile, we got Cora coming down to the empty cell, finding Hook standing there. He tells Cora that he let Aurora go. In a rain, she flings him against the wall and binds him with a rock lantern. He rips out his hook and moves to cut his chest open with a rope. Hook then tells her to look in the satchel. He saying that he brought Cora a present. Cora looks in it and guess what it is. It revealed that Hook actually ripped out Aurora's heart so they can control her. So Cora, this, you know, she, she could use the heart to hear what the group is heading to and they're heading over to um, Rumpelstilts Castell and she, we have her going off with an evil smile. So I'm like, oh, snap. Take out Aurora's heart. I'm like, dang. To me, all I can think of this one, well, Sleeping Beauty had a good run. <laughs> That's all I could seriously thought when I saw the heart. I was like, well, Sleeping Beauty had a good run. She was a cool character. It was nice knowing her. Anyway, that was pretty much the eighth episode of season two of Once Upon a Time titled Into the Deep. The show won't be back on until January after this mid season finale. But it, was, it is good. I might do my review on it. Trust me, it was good. If you don't, if you know, you haven't seen the episode, Go to freaking ABC, download the freaking ABC player thingy, or go online and try to watch it online. But it was freaking good. Anyway, deuces. Clouded brow and dreaming eyes of wonder. Though time be fleet, and I and thou are half a life asunder. Thy loving smile will surely hail the love gift of a fairy tale. Thy loving smile will surely hail the love gift of a fairy tale. I have not seen thy sunny face, nor heard thy silver laughter. No thought of me shall find a place in thy young life's hereafter. Enough that now thou wilt not fail to listen to my fairy tale. Enough that now.